Hello everyone, so I think we did a pretty good job of breaking down why ideologically the modern death metal movement has nothing really in common with the death metal that we're all familiar with, and uh, that's mainly because modern people know everything, so there's no reason to talk about things that are unknown concepts like death and the void and uh, anything that is remotely scary like that we want to push outside of, of our uh, nice comfort zones, you know, we want to stay in our nice hug box and make kind of catchy but edgy-ish type of riffs with big smiles on our faces and call it death metal and, and call that a day. Uh, but, you know, I don't need to talk about the ideological issues with that. We've done that enough. What I want to talk about now, uh, in order to really pinpoint why it further has nothing in common, I should talk about the actual language in the music itself. And I think that one of the major crutches that the modern death metal movement is using is the pedal tone riff. And this is something that has been in metal since the beginning. There's nothing inherently wrong with it as a technique. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's uh, going back to a root note and kind of chugging on that while uh, having your melody lines as like a little bit of a flourish at the end or anchoring your position uh, at, at a root and then alternating that root in between different notes in your scale. Uh, an example of this would be like the verse riff of Master of Puppets. You know, it's driving, it gives the song momentum, so it has utility there. You know, everybody knows it. It's just you're chugging on that open E, and then you have uh, a little bit of a melodic flourish at the end. The, the entire riff isn't uh, one that is melodically comprised. Because of that, you have the duality between the open chugs and the actual melody at the end. So it has this nice yin-yang thing going for it. There is utility in the technique. Uh, but it's a technique that is mostly seen with great utility in the thrash metal genre, because that's, that's about momentum. That's about uh, staying in keys for the most part. Um, thrash metal is way more, um, it's way less atonal than death metal. It's way less chromatic than death metal. And if you're anchoring your position by, by staying on a pedal tone, uh, you're, you're kind of betraying the aesthetics of what death metal can be in that you can't really chromatically move around as much uh, and you're giving maybe a little bit too much melody, a little bit too much of a melodic backbone to, uh, to the riff, whereas uh, the, the liberating aspect of death metal is that you're kind of turning your back on the convention of the common musical language by being overtly chromatic. Uh, but we're seeing the abuse of the pedal tone being the backbone of how modern death metal is created. And I can really, I, I can tell you exactly why. Um, you know, people wear their influences on their sleeves and uh, the major issue here is that the main influence to all these technical death metal bands is Necrophagist, and I get why. Uh, when they exploded with their second album, and I've talked about this on this channel before, there wasn't really much like it. Metal has always been conflated with classical music. This was a band that had a sardonic take on classical music in the death metal lexicon. Uh, I feel as though, and what I'm about to show you, there's a lot more in common with thrash than death metal here, uh, but people gravitated towards the aesthetic of that. They can hear that it sounds classical. They can hear that that's something that they can take and put in their own music because it's scalar. It's something that you can practice uh, as an exercise and you can just take that exercise, put it in your riff and you're good. Uh, but this is where I think it all started to come from. So I'm gonna play you an example uh, of this song and I'll, sh I'll show you, you can visually see now, what you want to pay attention to is, I don't know if you guys know all of the guitar uh, jargon I talk about, but palm muting is when you're kind of choking the note with your picking hand. So pay attention to when you don't hear the note ring through. That's when he's hitting pedal tones because it's anchoring his position and then he's kind of moving notes around that, that, oh, that chug. Uh, so, so I'm going to show you the technique right here. So that dun 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 that's all pedal tones. And you know the superficially this sounds really crazy, right? It's like really it's like a static barrage of notes. You get that constant sixteenth note pressure, but by anchoring in position, 
you're you're really limiting how much you can really do here and you know I understand that there's still quite a few notes you can grab here but when you anchor in that position you, you really are kind of just like stuck in a spot where you only have so many different colors you can add to the riff that you're doing uh, but it's when I hear a pedal tone riff this this is a this is what I hear so to me it's it's the same as when someone is talking to you and instead of like giving you the actual crux of what they're saying they are saying like and um every other word so uh if you know music is language music is communication if you're going to be communicating something that is really important you should probably want to stick to the melody develop the fucking melody but if you're if you're counting on staying on that root note to anchor yourself you're really limiting the amount of colors you can add to your part and uh, it it just kind of makes it more one-dimensional plus you can hear when your root notes stop you know this music is only superficially technical now whereas before you know before they get into the pedal tone parts there's a lot more motion there's a lot more of a kinetic aspect to the music and then it just stops dead and you're just grabbing the notes that are within reach to kind of build your riff um, and like I said, there's utility to that. You could hear it in a lot of examples, but when you see it happen here, you can pinpoint where the roots are and you can see that the, the music itself is kind of basic. It still follows the same uh, chord functions as pop music. It's, you know, you got your, your four chord system. It's, it's all, it all kind of unravels when you really look at what they're doing here. So we'll, we'll keep going a little bit. See how all those palm mutes are just kind of sticking him in a root where like he has to be in that area and then by that you can hum the roots you can hum where the bass line is and that the you know when you compare actual complex death metal like a band like suffocation where the roots change all they're all over the place you know the tonic is never the same it's uh it's very kinetic music that's music that that it, that has much more of a natural ebb and flow than when you're just you're static here, you're stuck. You're stuck in this position every four chords, like pop music. So it's the perfect band for people that are really drawn by aesthetics. It's the perfect band for people that look at a guitar and they're like, How, who can I impress with this instrument who can i impress by practicing enough where i can do dexterous shit and uh you know if i work out my technique well enough people will think that there's depth to it it really is and i too when i was in college when this record came out i liked it for what it was actually when i was in college the first one came out and that was more of a novelty for me where if it would have ended there i would have been like oh that's a cute novelty record and then this is this, the second one came out and this exploded uh not just with metal people but hardcore kids and metalcore kids they all gravitated towards this because it was really the the perfect recipe of of all the shit that people that aren't trying to express what's within them are going to look for in music so this band is the issue the, and, and i'm going to show you some more examples but uh you know for i respect but i respect the idea that that no one really sounds like them i mean obviously there's a million clones but before them there wasn't a whole lot of bands that was that were doing this but the recipe was so easy to emulate that now everybody is doing this so i can't really hate them for what they did but the clones i absolutely can and i'm going to show you some more examples of that but uh you know modern metal people are not just going to pull from one influence there, there there's another another egregious band that we should probably talk about now all right, so another band I'm hearing in most modern metal is unfortunately Lamb of God. And uh, another perfect band to emulate because they're kind of a mishmash of a million bands that have come before. And when they first started, uh, they were kind of like a Meshuggah meets Slayer kind of meets Pantera thing. I don't really know what they are now. I unfortunately have to see them whenever I go to any kind of arena metal show. Last uh, When I saw Slayer at their last, their last tour, I unfortunately had to endure Lamb of God. And... Uh, I, having been around a ton of metalcore people um, in the early aughts, this band was talked about a lot, as was their former band, Burn the Priest, uh, but this really kind of exploded them into the mainstream, and uh, it's easy to see why it's got that percussive, chuggy, uh, kind of thrash 
type of riff, a lot of like Slayer tonality, and you know, even the hardcore metalcore kids knew Rain and Blood, so they're gonna hear that, they're gonna be like, oh, that's a Slayer riff, I like it, you know, it's, it's dumb, but it's true. Uh, but this is a band that also abuses the pedal tone keep them nice and anchored and almost every riff in this song I think is pedal tone so let's just uh let's just break it down so you hear it right in the first riff um this is this is another issue I have with pedal tone riffs this this has utility because you're allowing a notey passage to be contrasted with an open chug a nice duality there I understand why you do it but when you have when you lay out your guitar riffs like this I really think that a lot of people that are playing guitar and writing guitar riffs like this are kind of viewing the guitar like they would a drum set like they were like oh my my low E is my bass drum I never have to change that and then I can just have some random flourishes uh, you know on my my upper frets doesn't matter where they are you know if it's a tonal it's Slayer so we're good to go um, so I think that when you're, when you're using this technique to the extent that modern bands are, you're really limiting how you view your guitar neck. There's, there's a fucking wealth of infinite possibilities there. And if you're just using that open E as your, your route to anchor yourself, just to keep your chugs going, it's, it's just a shame. There's so much more potential there. So let's keep going. So if you pay attention to what's going on here, there's very little in that riff that isn't the root note or the octave. It's, it's pretty much a nonsensical riff that he can get away with just palm muting the open E on and it wouldn't make a difference either way. And then you have the good old tried and true change the root from a zero fret to an eighth fret and you got your nice cloying emotional uh, melodic passage uh, so that's a, that's again another pedal tone you you hear it in slaughter of the soul you hear it in all those those swedish bands um so you know you know when you hear it you you know exactly what it is uh that reliance on the root to contrast with your melody lines uh and using the melody extremely sparingly uh you know I would really love to hear that these bands could just complete a melody. That's the issue I have with this: is that you can you can complete a melody. You don't have you can still get that kind of momentum you get from the open chugs, the the the, the palm muted roots. You can you can still mim mimic that while having the notes change enough to give development. You know, there's, you don't have to rely on that rhythmic aspect. And I get it, you know, you want to play some big old arena metal. You know, it, it feels good, fans will love it, but God, it's just so limiting. It's so de depressing to me. Um, you know, I just want to hear a nice completed melody. And for all that death metal is in terms of chromaticism and atonal aspects of music, there's complete melodies. They, they go from A to Z for the most part. You know, you're going to have your jungle rots and shit like that where none of that applies but uh this over reliance on that pedal tone is not something you see in death metal yet in modern death metal it is so uh now i think i want to show you some modern examples of this kind of idea that's plaguing modern sound so i've talked about in theory an awful lot on this channel not gonna do that anymore aside from just looking at the riffs themselves so let's go ahead and have a look See all that anchoring and how it just kind of pins you in place and 
there's so much more development they could be doing. There's so much more of completion of melody that they could be doing, but they're so focused on making sure the music is driving. You can do that while still having your melodies develop. It's really a shame. And I understand that modern metal writers don't have a sense of melody, and they're essentially grabbing what sounds consonant within the reach of the note that they're palm muting. I get it, uh, and you know it's a recipe that works. But goddamn, like you, you could see the talent, you could see that they're dexterous, you could see they understand how to play, they know their instrument. But it's it, it would just be so much more of a visceral punch if I could hear a completed melody. Instead, it just it just sounds like if I were to give you a sentence instead of saying this band fucking sucks, it would be as if I were to say this like um um band like um fucking um 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 sucks like that is annoying right you want to hear the completed sentence get to the fucking working overtime part right yeah this band can't do it and a lot of modern bands can't do it i don't know if they're choosing to do it or if they just can't but to me it just seems like a crutch they have heard the technique they've heard the trope they know how to build from the trope instead of like having something organically come from within and that's where your melody resonates your melody comes from within if you're playing like this if you're writing like this you're handicapping your ability to make a complete melody so let's just see where it goes from here So you hear, you know, it's this is technical death metal, right? But you can hear that it's just a simple two chord riff because they're pinning themselves to it and they're grabbing the melodies that they can within reach of it. It's, it's all the same shit. And that's why you're gonna hear all these bands sound the same because they're grabbing the notes that are within reach of the root. And it's, it's, you, you have to stay comfortable when you're playing music like this live for a 40 minute set because your hand is gonna cramp out. I've been there, I know it sucks. Uh, so, you know, there's probably a little bit of forethought into how can I do music like this for a, a long set? And this is what you're gonna get if you're gonna try to play technical music and you know make sure that you can get through it. You're gonna have to have riffs that appear dexterous, appear technical, appear to have depth when in fact they're just brain dead simple pop riffs. You know, it's, I don't know, it is what it is. I'll go a little bit further and then I'll show you the last example. So I really don't have to go any further. I mean, you hear that, that just uh, constant 16th note passage. There's no, there's no, when you have a riff like that where all of the notes are consistent, some of them are palm muted. So you get kind of giving a little bit of value to the notes that aren't palm muted, but it's, it's fast to the point where the, the melody is choked and you can't really discern it enough to ascertain where the melody lies. And it just feels like an exercise. It just feels like static. So that's, and if you were to look at this label, you know, the guy's label that I've talked about a million times, I don't need to do it again, but all of the bands are using the same technique. And because of that, they're using the same note clusters and the same developments. It's, it's really a problem, but let's go to the last example. All right, so this last example is a YouTube guitarist, and you all know how I feel about YouTube guitarists. Uh, his name is Sebasticide, and his presence is usually felt through about 30 second or so samples of riffs that are dazzling in a dexterous way, uh, but they are all comprised of pedal tone passages, which as explained before, pins them to a root and thus makes them essentially pop music structures, which is not what metal is, uh, at least not what death metal is. Uh, but you know, the kid is young, he's 24 and he's very skilled, but this is a result of not broadening, broadening your horizons and being open to a whole wealth of in influential bands that could show you how to complete a fucking melody. Because this, is, what, what I'm about to play is, is another one of those just choking your ideas by making sure the palm mutes are there and making sure that you have drive to it. But those are all things that you can have happen within a completed melody if you were to actually learn how to do so. But people are so focused on what their audience wants to hear. And the audi audiences love Chug, unfortunately. So I'll show you what this kid sounds like. <laughs> So you hear how it always goes back to that open, I don't know, it's probably F sharp, 
Um, it always goes back to that, and that's that's another case of looking at your your guitar like it's a drum set. And you know you have your flourishes, your your Slayer esque flourishes, and all the gent bands. Uh, they all have that same kind of tonality to their melodic flourishes because they're grabbing the notes that are within reach of the root. And it's a shame, but it is what it is. <laughs> And all of those are, are very close to the octave of the riff. I, it, uh, you would have to really hear, be familiar with that tonality to hear it, because it is fast and it sounds technical, but a lot of it is just uh, making the riff have a few notes in it that are an octave higher than the root that he's playing and having one or two fret deviations from that. So it sounds busy, but it's essentially the same tone in different octaves. <laughs> So that's the second riff of the song, and once again, it's still relying on that open, I don't know, it might be F sharp, I don't know, uh, maybe, no, that's too low, it's probably a, a B sharp, but I don't have perfect pitch by any means, but uh, it's still making sure that that open, that open note is what's anchoring the song, and, you know, if you're, if you're going to have your second riff showcase development, the development shouldn't just be in the flourishes, you have to change that root to show that, that there's some kind of movement happening. Uh, otherwise, this part of the riff is telling the same story as the first part of the riff. Uh, it really doesn't serve a purpose. So you heard all the Lamb of God shit in there, you heard some of the Necrophagia shit in there. Uh, I mean, it, the recipe is there. It, and it's, it's in all of it. It's in all the modern metal. Uh, there, I wish that they could just take the time to complete the melody. Just complete a fucking melody once. But they won't. They want to choke it and make sure those chugs are in there. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's frustrating. But this is the crutch that is going to cause metal to really divorce itself from what makes metal great. Uh, and if you can't comprise the melody, if you can't complete the melody, you just can't be a metal musician. You know, you can be a gent musician, you can be a metal core musician, but the core of what makes metal what it is, is the melody. Even bands like Metallica and the thrash bands would stop doing pedal tones here and there to let the melody tell the story. And these bands can't fucking do it. And because of that, all the riffs sound the same, and all the songs sound the same, and all the fucking bands sound the same. It's exhausting, but I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys, show you guys the, the actual technique. The show you guys the issue is not just, you know, with what the bands are portraying in terms of, oh, they're, they're a bunch of fucking goofy guys in their music videos. It's what they're actually doing with the language they're presenting in the music that is making it divorced from what metal is. And, uh, you know, this shit has been in metal since the fucking dawn of time. I'm not going to say it hasn't been, but it has had utility in those moments, and it hasn't been the, the benchmark. It hasn't been the foundation for everything that is in the toolkit of the player, and now it is. Um, I actually wanted to show some examples of old bands that have used pedal tone riffs, mainly like, and, you know, I've talked about death before. Death is huge on pedal tone riffs. Like if you think about like the song Symbolic, that is reliant on that, that chugging of the D and the melodic flourishes around it. There's a lot more development there than there is here, but it's the same kind of idea. And I wanted to show you guys some examples of how you can complete the melody there to make it stronger, or at least give a different color uh, to what just those chugs can do. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time today, but maybe in a future video I can do that if you guys are interested. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that this, this is a technique that is really hobbling the ability to express. And I don't see it going away, but you know, maybe I could be surprised. if this, this is the main thing I would love to see aside from getting rid of the fucking mosh parts and all that shit, the breakdowns. If you could just complete a fucking melody, I will start to listen to these bands and take them a little more seriously. All right, thanks for listening.